Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I'm Rabbi Batsheva Appel, and with me this evening is Kyle Knapp, a musician extraordinaire. <laughs> Always lovely to share the bima with Kyle. I invite you to join me as you would like in the prayers as I do them in Hebrew or in English. Twilight quietly descends. It is soon Shabbat in your heart. The long week slowly, slowly slips off your shoulders. You ask what you've repaired and what remains broken still, and which of your actions, daughter, should be forgotten as the sun goes down. From whence comes the blessing? What is your power? What in you does not back down from darkness as the sun goes down? From whence comes the blessing? You ask what did you give, what lurks like a debt between him and you. Stick with good for now, believe in it with all your might. You ask which is muted, did you say too much for better or for worse, and what, what sin did you find in the bread of routine as the sun goes down, from whence comes the blessing? What is your power? What in you does not back down from darkness? As the sun goes down, from whence comes the blessing.
I would like to invite Chris Fair up to do our candle blessing this evening. So that's supposed to be a whole lot easier to light. I'm not an expert in it, though. You'll notice I'm never good at this. Oh, <laughs> you're much better than me. Amen. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. So we continue now having welcomed Shabbat in that way by lighting Shabbat candles, actually preparing for Shabbat. And some of you already know what I'm going to say because I see some of you straightening your bodies out. <laughs> so I am about to invite you to set your intention for Shabbat. And part of that is settling and grounding your physical self in your seat as you are comfortable in doing so. So that may include sitting up straight because any adult who ever told you when you were a child, sit up straight, you'll breathe better. Sadly, they were correct. I, I hate to say <laughs> they told you so. You might uncross your legs and put both feet on the floor. You might uncross your arms and just put your hands gently in your lap. You might even close your eyes. And then, as I invite you to take three, three deep breaths, I invite you to consider what your intention for this Shabbat is. Is your intention to gather with community and have the love and support of community and family and friends? Is your intention to put down all the burdens and all the lists and all the counting that you did this past week? Is your intention to encounter the holiness that is Shabbat for the next 25 hours? It's your intention to set how you want to see your Shabbat. So I invite you now to take those three deep breaths and to set your intention. welcome Shabbat more formally as if we were in welcoming a bride to the kufa, the wedding canopy.
microphone to make sure it's on. It says it's on. Okay. Am That's I on? That's good to know. Okay. Okay, we're good. Please be seated. And so we understand that ordinary people are messengers of the Most High. They go about their tasks in holy anonymity, even unknown to themselves. Yet if they had not been there, if they had not said what they said or did what they did, it would not be the way it is now. We would not be the way we are now. Never forget that you, too, yourself may be a messenger, perhaps even one whose errand extends over several lifetimes. And now we sing a song about holy messengers, the angels that come to our homes every Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem. who are comfortable in doing so to please rise as we continue with the main part of our service. This is an hour of change. Within it, we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it, we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch ata Adonai Hamaariv Arabim. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Seated. 
וכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאותיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצא בך היום על לבביך ושיננת עם לבניך ודיברת פעם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי והייתם גרושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי לכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמת Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. I'm sorry, I forgot where we were. Sitting down too soon. You were in the groove, I get it. I was in the groove, I got lost. I get it. Behind me, they knew. 
invites God's presence to suffuse our spirits, God's will to prevail in our lives. Prayer may not bring water to parched fields, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city. But prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, rebuild a weakened will. comfortable in doing so to please rise for the Amidah, for the standing prayer. We'll go through the first part of it together and then there will be time for your own individual prayers at which point you will pray your own prayers and when you feel that you have completed your prayers for, for today you will be seated. Adonai sifatai tiftahu fi agita hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avotenu vimotenu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. Eloe Sara, Eloe Rivka, Eloe Rachel, Eloe Lea, Ha El Agadol, Agibor, Vahanora, El El Yon, Gomel Hasadim, Tovim, Vekone, Akol, Vezoher Haste of Ot, Vima Hot, Umevi Gula, Livne, Venehem, Leman Shemo, Beava. 
melech hozer umoshia umagin baruch atadonai magen avraham vezrat sara atagi borle olamadonai mechaye hakolata rav lehoshia morid hatal mechalkel chayim bechesed mechaye hakol berachamim rabim so mech noflim verofech olim, o matir asurim, o mekaye memunato li shene afar, micha mocha baal givurot, o mito melach, melech me mitu mechaye, o matzmiach yeshua. Beneman atala chayot hakol, baruch atadonai, mechaye hakol. Ata kadosh, rishim chakadosh, ukadoshim bechol yom yalalu chasela. Baruch atadonai, ha'el hakadosh. We now count the Omer. As a hint, because I think you can all do addition of plus one, today before sundown and before we count was day 43. So now in your head, add one. Join with me as you would like to. I am ready to fulfill the mitzvah of counting the Omer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu al svirat haomer. Our praise to you, Adonai, sovereign of all, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to count the Omer. Today is the 44th day, which is six weeks and two days of the Omer. Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Ki Yata Hu Melech Adon Le'kol HaShalom We 
now say a prayer asking for God's healing blessings, healing of body, healing of spirit, healing of mind. On the screen, you'll see some of those that we keep in mind for healing as a community. Um, but there will be time for you to add names of those that you are thinking of um, needing of healing. Also, for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, um, we you can put those names into chat. And now would be a good time to start because it doesn't. It's not always immediate. So make sure that you put names that you're interested in keeping in mind in the chat immediately. Um, and we will remember all of them for healing. We keep in mind for healing Susan Alexander, Joe Alvarado, Susie Anderson, Cal Arnold, Juventino Avalos, Virginia Becker, Tony Baraldi, Jeff Bradfield, Jean Brasco, Lisa Brunkhorst, Hildardo Carrera, Sandy Christofferson, Joseph Conant, Kevin Cooper, Jen Dawson, Dominic Eads, Ariana Elness, Mildred Fisher, Jenny Forrell, Judy Kaiman, Ronald Kaplan, Nancy Katz, Karen Levin, Norma Levinson, Mario Lopez, Pablo Radigaruba Lopez, Brandy Matson, Emily McWhorter, Carmen Munn, Brian Nog, Pedro Comi Olimpio, Nadine Ostro, Doris Parker, Wendy Passer, Gail Peterson, Jamie Poole, Mark Ratner, Gloria Romero Downing, Holly Rosenberg, Samuel Rosinski, Emily Sachs, George Sachs, Gregory Sachs, Scott Schneiderman, Steve Seglin, Teresa Serrano, Linda J. Sherman, Leon Simard, Teresa Smith, Dee Dee Spiegel, Chrissy Swenson, Sarah Jane Tietzel, Mason Volkman, Laura J. West, Barb Wig, Brent Wine, Kate Ewell. There are others that you are keeping in mind for healing. I invite you to say their names now. On Zoom, we keep in mind Lee Spider, Diana Ates Hooken, Carly Shapiro, Fika Noor, um, Lisa, Lisa Stannard, Brian Cerberus, Patricia Anderson. Um, Claire Agar, Lloyd Agar, Ted Agar, David Irving, Bob Pearson, Carly Shapiro, Hannah Miriam Batsarachava, Les K, Linda Bar Barankin. I add the name Harav Eliyahu Ben David. We keep all of them in mind for healing, both those that we've named and those that we keep close in our hearts as we sing this blessing together. Bless the Lord. 
How old do you have to be to drive, to marry, to drink, to vote, to serve in the armed forces, to be considered an adult? There are variations in all these parameters from place to place and country to country. There are arguments that are made for raising or lowering any of these legal ages. People are responsible at a certain age. They need protection from the world and from themselves. And we need to be protected from them. People are responsible at a younger age than we give them credit for. We should trust them. Certainly in the last few decades, we have seen changes in all of these ages because of new laws and because of the new realities in which we live. Childhood in some ways ends sooner and in other ways continues longer. In general, people are getting married if we later if we choose to marry. More of us are waiting to have children and are starting families, our families later in life if we have children. We all know people who are wise beyond their years. Many of us comment on our perception that college students and healthcare professionals look younger to us with each passing year. We are not the only ones who have thought about how old one should be before taking on different types of responsibility. In Care Care Vote, we read, at five years old, a person should be fit to study the scriptures. At 10 for the Mishnah, at 13 for the commandments, at 15 for the Talmud, at 18 for the bridal chamber, at 20 for one's life pursuit, at 30 for authority, at 40 for discernment, at 50 for counsel, at 60 to be an elder, at 70 for gray hairs, at 80 for special strength. This summary of a lifetime certainly outlines a life balance between study, family, and work. This rabbinic source gives 20 as the age to follow one's life pursuit. The Torah gives 20 years old as the time to be counted for military service. We read in this week's Torah portion, Parashat B'midbar, take a census of the whole Israelite community by the clans of its ancestral houses, listing the names every male head by head. You and Aaron shall record them by their groups from, eight, from the age of 20 years up, all those in Israel who are able to bear arms. At 20 years old, an Israelite male is ready to be counted and may be counted on to fight on behalf of the community. Hertz, in his commentary, notes that the aged, the infirm, the maimed, those who are unable to bear arms and those under the age of 20 will be excluded from this census. He does not mention something that is obvious to us reading the text, that approximately half the Israelites will not be counted because they are female. Milgram's commentary to the book of Numbers compares the age for conscription for the Israelites to what is known about other societies in the ancient world. In the classical world, the age for entering military service was 20 in Sparta, 18 in Athens, and 17 in Rome. We learn a few more chapters further in the book of Numbers that the age range for another type of mandatory service, the service of the Levites, the priests serving the sacrificial cult, is from 30 to 50 years old. Even in the ancient world, the legal age for different types of mandatory service varies from society to society. Reaching a certain age means a set of new responsibilities, new obligations. Reaching a certain age might mean that a person is counted, but it does not mean that they can be counted on to fulfill their duties. There is more to it than just being a number or, in the case of this census, a name on a list. There is also the acceptance of the expectations that come with passing a specific birthday. In Pirkei Avod, it says that 13 is the time for the commandments. When we speak with B'nai Mitzvah students today, frequently they will say that marking the milestone of B'nai Mitzvah means that they are, and this is a direct quote over and over and over again, an adult in the Jewish religion. 
course, when we get right down to it, they are not adults at the age of 12 or 13 in the secular world or in the Jewish religion. The name mitzvah means becoming responsible for the commandments in the Torah. It is the increased accountability for how one is Jewish. It can be thought of as being someone who counts, particularly in a minyan, when 10 Jewish adults are needed to represent the community for there to be a worship service and certain prayers to be said. More importantly is becoming someone who can be counted on to be present when needed by the community. It is not just a chronological age. It is the acceptance of the responsibility and privilege that comes with reaching the age of being obligated for the commandments. Cantor Rachel Stockspilker in the Torah of Women's Commentary reminds us that in our day, the need reminds us of that in our day, we have the need to count differently, to include everyone. She states, the Israelites may have needed parameters for whom to include and whom to exclude from the census described in Bemidbar, but we must remember why even those not tallied do, in fact, matter. Today, we may count every individual in our community, but may still discount how much they have to offer. The missing members in this parasha can teach us to reconsider what it means to count. As the numerous stories in the Bible and our lives remind us, even those not included are important, and all those we now seek to include genuinely are individuals with much to gain from and offer to our communities. Most of us in this room have long passed the age of becoming b'nai mitzvah or becoming adults. It is important to keep in mind that we are more than just numbers, whether the number is our age or the number of Jews in our community. We count and we are counted on. We are both the expectations on us and the way that we fulfill those expectations after reaching a certain age. We contribute to the community both numerically and in the ways in which the community can depend on us. As I invite everyone who is comfortable in standing to please rise um, so that we can begin the concluding prayers, I just wanted to share that um, Cantor Alexander is not with us this evening because um, she's on vacation, much deserved. Uh, Rabbi Berezin sadly is not with us this Shabbat uh, because she had a death in her family, and the funeral was today, so she's not able to be with us this Shabbat. But she, all going well, she will be with us next week. We continue now with the Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol l'atet g'dula l'yotzer b'reshit shelo asanu kigoye aratzot Velo samanu kemishpachot adama shelo samachelkenu kahem vegora leinu kechol amonam vaanachnu korim umishtachavim umotim lefne melech malche hamlachim hakatosh baruchu. The Nemar Vahaya Adonai Lamelech al Kola Aretz Bayomahu Bayomahu Adonai Echan Shemo Ushemo Ushemo Please be seated. We come to our time of remembering and our time of memory as we say Kaddish, a prayer that praises God and prays for the coming of God's kingdom. And we 
remember those who have died at many points during our day, during the year, but we may especially remember them at this point in our service. If you are on Zoom and wish to share the name of somebody for Kaddish, I invite you to put the name into the chat, and I would suggest that you do that immediately because it's not always instantaneous of it coming to, to us here in the sanctuary. And for those of us who are in the sanctuary, if you hear a name that you are here this Shabbat to remember, I invite you, as you are comfortable in doing so, to please rise. And then I will ask in the sanctuary for other names that you are thinking of on this Shabbat. We are in the period of Shiva, the first seven days of mourning for Chad Thomas Schaefer, Alexander Lee Christensen. We are in the period of Shloshim, the first 30 days of mourning for Clifford Abbott Levitin, Judith K. Stern, Alfred Mark Brodke, Samuel Gendler, Gilbert Smith. And we remember the yard sites, the anniversaries of the deaths of Abraham Block, Marvin Allen Buki, Fanny Brandeis, Jackie Lynn Rothman Christensen, Ethel Dannon, Vicki Ducharme, Florence Ferdinand, Patricia Ryan Flaherty, Carrie Lynn Fredericks, Maurice Friedland, Marvin Gerber, Richard S. Glazer, Yeti Hertzberg, Benjamin Adam Holmberg, Earl Leon Katz, Louis G. Kendis, Celia Lapidus, Marvin Linsky, Justin L. Manvis, Eva Mass, Marilyn A. Mellon, Lucille Bonoff Meyer, Milton Parker, Robert Kitlor, Zella H. Chernus Resnick, Hesse Rosenstock, J.L. Rothschild, Laura Rubin, Max Sachs, Ida W. Sachs, A. Michael Sachs, Molly Schimmel, Maram Schuster, Leonid Shapiro, Laser L. Singer, Harry M. Spiegel, Sylvia Stein, Hortense B. Sugarman, Marvin Donald Taxman, Lillian G. Warren, Minnie Wolf, Max Wolfson, Audrey Leah Volta. If you have another name to add, I invite you to stand and say that name now. And in the chat, we have Bonnie Leffler and Matt Van Tassel. For those that we've named and for those that we keep close in our hearts, I invite the congregation to rise as you are comfortable in doing so in support of those mourning as we recite these words together. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba v'yalma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael Ba'agalau v'zman kari v'imru, amen. Yehe shmei rabba mevorach le'olam omei olmaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit ba'ar v'yit ramam v'yit nase. V'yit adar v'yit ale v'yit halal shmei rikudsha v'rechu. Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata. Tushbachata v'nechamata. Ba'amiran ve'alma v'imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Ose shalom v'imromav. Hu ya'ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol yoshvei tevel v'imru. Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us and to all Israel and to all the world to which we say, Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor because it's just too weird for me to read the first announcement. 
<laughs> so if you'll come over here. So first, let me thank Kyle Knapp, our amazing musician, for everything that he added to our service this evening. Thank you to everybody in the back of the house, which includes um, Scott Anderson and Ed Klignett. Thank you to our tech people, Eli Lopez, and uh, is it Sarah Rice back there? Sarah Rice. Um, thank you to our owning volunteers, which include Gail Knapp. Gail, is there pie tonight? Uh, Terry Joy, Alana Linthicum, Francisco Jimenez Guzman. Um, and I'm going to ask all of our board members to stand up and wave to all the folks so that they can find you during the Oneg Shabbat. Um, they're also handily labeled with a little name tag. So look for them if there are things that you want them to know or things that you want to ask them. Okay, now you got to read that first one. We are sad to say that it's time to start saying shalom to Rabbi Appel. We're so grateful that she spent the last year with us, but her time with us is coming to an end. On June 2nd, we will be saying our official farewells during service. Her last sermon and last time on the Bima is Friday, June 9th. Tomorrow is actually her last time teaching Torah study. Don't miss your chance to say farewell. Thank you. You can see why that was a little awkward. I, 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 yes. <laughs> Tikkun Leil Shavuot is this coming week. On Thursday, May 25th, we will be co-hosting an education evening at Bethel. The Shavuot service begins at 6.30 p.m. and learning sessions will begin at 7 p.m. to be concluded at 10 p.m. These will be live streamed as well. We will be also serving refreshments of cheesecake, cookies, coffee, tea, etc. RSVPs are encouraged, but walk-ins are welcome. The Shavuot morning service in Yiskor will be at 10.30 a.m. on Friday, May 26th here at Temple Israel. And we will have a Friday community celebration that evening. And that spelling is deliberate. Huh. Um, after Shabbat services, please stay for a free sweet treat at our Onik Shabbat where we will be serving carousels, which is a soft serve icery. There is also a tot Shabbat that evening, so we're looking forward to an all-ages evening, and I think we're doing a wedding blessing, and there's a sponsored Oneg. It's going to be a sweet, delightful evening. So we, we hope that you join us. Make sure to check out our website for our upcoming summer events, like Music Bingo on June 1st. Finally, attend our annual meeting on June 13th at 7 p.m., we will be doing a State of the Congregation address, giving out awards, and voting on the upcoming slate. We will send out slate information on Sunday and in next week's e-tidings. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I invite everyone who is comfortable in doing so to stand for our Kiddush. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Bore Puriya Gahapen Baruch Atadanai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshan of the Mitzvotav Veratzavanu Veshabbat Kotsho Meava Uvratzon in Hilanu Zikaron Lema Asevere Shi Kihu Yom Tehila La mikrai kodesh ze chelatziat mi Yitzrayim ki vanu vacharta v'otanu kidashta mi kohamim v'shabat kodshecha be'ahavah uvratzon in Kaltanu, Baruch Atadunai, Mekadesh, Hashabat. Baruch Atadunai, Eloheinu Melech Olam. 
Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Dory, thank you, and Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom, Lisa.